Hey everybody and welcome to the show. Today we're going to be talking about the rules for shipping your car with Executive Auto Transport. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, welcome back to Car Side Chat. I am your host, Primo, and I have a very exciting show today. Today we have Joseph Tebow of Executive Auto Transport. Uh, everybody out there at some point in time has probably thought about shipping a car. Maybe you have shipped a car and you want to find about the easiest way to do it. You want to understand like the rules of it. And that's something we want to go over today. And talk to him because he is obviously the expert. So, um, and it's obviously, it's it's a highly rated place that I've done a little work looking into. So I'm really happy to have him on the show today to go over it. But first, as always, you guys don't forget to like and subscribe. One of the biggest things uh, that we have is being able to share the stuff out uh, and do what you have. Maybe make sure you go over to our website, Executive Automo Society. Um, and I don't know if you remember yesterday we went over on the show, we're going to have an unboxing next week uh, for the cross pins. So some of the pins from Ferrari that they offered out. Um, so we're going to put that out. And of course we have the new apparel. So the new shirts, we're going to put this up as soon as we can. It's executive automotive in the product section. Um, so I want to make sure that you guys run over to that. I got to make sure that we have our, little subscribe video back up we didn't need to put that back up uh but then you know, the last thing we're going to have is obviously june 24th through the 26th is a 22 rally there's probably i don't know five or six places left on this to sign up so uh make sure that you definitely sign up for that so here we have with us right now joseph tebow how you doing buddy Good. How are you? Executive I, Auto Transport and Executive, <laughs> executive yeah, know, Automotive right? Society. You, you know, it seemed almost like a, a marriage made in heaven, didn't it? It was like, right? and then you you just kind of messaged me out of the blue and you were just like, hey, did you need anything? And I was like, funny enough, I do. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There you we didn't go. expect it to go this route, though, did you? No, 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 I didn't. But yeah. hey, I'm happy to be here. Good. Well, do me a favor then, because one thing I want that, that we have a a bunch of people who are starting to come on right now, and uh, I want to make sure that they understand who you are and what you're all about. So introduce it, but you know, go over your name, that kind of thing, yeah. and what Executive is all about. No, nah, my name's Joe Tebow. I'm the Executive Sales Manager here at Executive Auto Transport. Um, we obviously transport vehicles nationwide, uh, open or enclosed. Uh, we actually specialize in enclosed service uh, as well. So white glove treatment, that sort of thing. Thanks. Um, we pride ourselves on always being honest with our clients, which is tough to find in this industry. Okay. Also, we pride ourselves on protecting each and one of our clients on every move, uh, as well as we can. So we have nice. all the proper insurances, um, to cover just about any vehicle, uh, nice. as well as we specialize in speed as well. Uh, we pick up vehicles, you know, roughly about in roughly days, as opposed to carriers who pick up vehicles in, in weeks or sometimes months. Right. Uh, and we are a high-end brokerage firm, mm -hmm. basically meaning we work within a network of high-end carriers that we solely use to transport our vehicles. We have personal relationships with these carriers and deal with them on a daily basis. Yeah. So unlike the place that tried to pick up the old uh, Ferrari the last time that we ordered and they said, we can't move this because we're not insured, you won't have that issue. No, never. So basically, I like to say your our clients are usually double insured, meaning- wow. Yeah, meaning basically they're insured through the carriers that we use with mm -hmm. their cargo insurance mm -hmm. up to their amount. Um, so basically, if the vehicle is over that amount, we'll go ahead and activate our insurance, which is a million dollar policy. It goes okay. over and above the carrier's insurance nice. um, to make sure your vehicle is fully insured at all times. Wow. So it protects you. For example, hmm. uh, I once had a car on board uh, and the insurance of the carrier actually expired and we missed it. Um, but with that being said, our insurance, we, we opened up a claim on our behalf, which is umbrella insurance. Um, we were able to insure that vehicle throughout the process with our insurance directly. Nice. So uh, do you, when you do the shipping stuff, is it usually like something that takes 
a couple of days or let's say my you know v12 for your old v12 ferraris love having electrical issues um right. and they always have problems finding people that can pick them up so if i said in an afternoon i need to call you and get somebody that's like a smaller shipper to just kind of pull something out to get the car from point a to a local shop would that be something you could do as well as the large truck shipping yeah so so we don't do too much local stuff um, okay. but we do we do local stuff um occasionally for situations just like you sp uh we're, we're talking about from shop to shop um, from home to shop that type of deal Got it. Uh, and you mentioned the vehicle not running uh yeah. something we would need to know up front so that way we could arrange a truck um that had a winch it, it yeah right and, and winch that car on and, and right. went hook it up to the winch and winch it up. Well, old V12 Ferraris, you can just uh, probably expect it a lot of times if they're quick hookups. <laughs> well, yep, yep. You got to take your time. It's so funny. Out. It's so funny that we have these cars and they're like these, these old, nice, beautiful vehicles, pristine in condition, and you turn the key and there's smoke pouring out of some wire somewhere, and you're like, why is it doing this? I'm like, I... I have no idea. It's just, it's part of the, the agreement that you have. So how long have you been uh, in this business? I personally have been in this business shipping vehicles for mm -hmm. about five years. Nice. Um, executives have been in business for about six. So there was a year bef before I, I came on board. Before they smartened up and hired you? Yeah, right. <laughs> yep. um, but yeah, funny uh, that you ask is I, we have a great team here at Executive. Uh, one of our... Um, one of my colleagues has 40 years of experience. Wow. Uh, one of my other colleagues, 20 years, the owner, 20 years in all aspects of transporting vehicles from hauling them himself um, to the brokerage side of things like we do now. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a really solid team behind me. Obviously, you notice I'm young, um, but I, I soak in all this knowledge from all this experience daily. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really helped me out um, yeah. progress in the industry quickly. Something that we're learning recently, and I think it's probably one of the best lessons that we'd ever learn, is that yet there are young people that are getting into this. And it is nothing but rewarding to see the passion that comes from the idea of being able to get into this automotive world, no matter what it is. And that's the thing is, is people think, well, you, you're either going to sell cars, or you're going to repair cars. That's your thing. But there's so many other areas, and especially like we were doing with dent repair cleaning and now with shipping that you know somebody like yourself could come in and say look i got a lot of knowledge i understand how to do management i know how to you know orchestrate things um and here's an opportunity for for you to get into the business right out of the gate and and do something that's going to be working with you know both high end and whatever end cars i mean i'm sure you ship every kind of car there is right oh yeah oh yeah mm -hmm. Uh, from from fire trucks all the way to motorcycles, all the way to golf carts. Yeah, we had we have a picture. I love this one because a lot of our guys work with these uh, high end like stuff, construction workers and stuff like that. And that was the thing is, is they at you actually were able to ship some of the big stuff. And so if you like don't if you're out if you're out there and you're not just shipping a car and you you're in this and you're saying hey I need uh, I need somebody to to Try, you know push my truck around or my whatever you guys got him covered right oh yeah even even rvs uh campers nice. so we offer service it's called uh driveway service so okay. if you have a camper we we'd hire a truck that would come hook up to your camper and deliver the camper uh wherever you would like it moved so wow. we do that as well yeah it's pretty pretty impressive. I, i'm now completely like I, i'm just now wish we had a video or something uh <laughs> like yeah. uh, i could just see the towing away like i've did i worked in um if you know do you know coachman rvs oh yeah yep. yeah so i worked kind of sidebar with with the company because i was working at the time with business development uh and it was so funny that we worked with rvs and um yeah it was pretty funny that we we just it, it's so much stuff about how rvs did that you're like it's so bigger an issue. People don't realize how much goes into RVs and they're just oh, yeah. and moving them around and stuff. Oh my God. Yeah, Cause you do all the work on them and they, they, they have to, you know they what I mean? They have move. to go someplace. Yeah. So yeah. But, um, but yeah, now, now I have somebody I can call if any of those old guys call me yeah. back up and be like, hey, oh, yeah. I need something. So the other thing I, I got to ask right now, right now, the, we're in a really weird flux period. Uh, demand is very high for vehicles and the vehicles are everywhere. 
Um, and just there's more and more collectors jumping into this. Have you seen an uptick in business re recently or is it kind of the same? Yeah. So to, to answer um, your statement there is basically what I find is happening a lot um, mm -hmm. is there is actually a little bit of a um, lack of inventory. So okay. with that being said, these these customers looking for these cars are now looking at a state for these vehicles because they're right. local Mercedes Benz don't have them on the lot anymore. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, they're then going looking at, um, say, they're in Massachusetts and they can't find the Mercedes Benz they're looking for. They found yeah. one in Florida. Um, they contact us to ship it. Um, yeah. So we've been finding this happening a lot more than it than it has in years past, just because of the lack of inventory at these dealerships. Mm -hmm. People, and that's, I mean, that's what it. that's what I've been doing recently. Like I was looking at, um, I don't have a passion for S class mercedes i don't know why oh, but uh yeah so it's like i ended up looking places in the local stuff i just didn't i didn't want the 430 it was kind of eh. but i was looking at something bigger that you know something that can cruise the whole family because we'll do these rallies like we do the 22 rally and it's like you know where do you put the family like the truck is nice but then you don't want to go too small because you end up in a maserati it's like i don't have any trunk space you know and i really don't want to go bentley so i was thinking mercedes and i was just like you know the s I had one before it was perfect a lot tons of space but everything that i look at is new york pennsylvania wherever um you know it, it's just been it's just been continuously fighting to find something uh and it's really part of that looking for those vehicles do you think that we're gonna see this continue to go up or do, do you think it's gonna flatline at some point here um well i hope it flatlines at some point just mm -hmm. because we we like you know inventory to be up which just yep. means that more cars are being transported in general with our dealership yep. side of things right um but yeah i mean really i would just hope that it, it kind of would flatline to to answer your question that if it's gonna uptake don't don't get me wrong i'll be happy to ship more vehicles uh the most vehicles i can right um, but on my side of things I, I would like to see it level out so that mm -hmm. way we could do some more um, dealership yeah. transportation as, as well as you know right exactly so and you you work with obviously dealers as well as personal vehicles so if somebody oh. says you know obviously business is going to want to ship three or four cars um but if somebody wants to say i want to ship 72 cars or one person says i just ordered a car and i want to ship one car you have no problem doing either one right yeah, no problem either one. Obviously, we're not fitting 76 cars on the same truck. We right. Have to send, you know, multiple, <laughs> multiple trucks. That would be but, very uh, impressive if you could. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like to say I, I can handle anything you got. So yeah, Exactly. All right, perfect. So th this is one of my big questions today that I really want to get to it because for one of the reasons that we even started the show and I wanted to have you on because having done this before worked at a dealership had stuff shipped I've, I've actually basically like brokered cars with people and try to get stuff and it's very difficult sometimes to tell the cons tell people out there like what to expect when they ship stuff so if it's possible i want to know if there's um so if, if you're in a person let's say let's say i got that s series for instance and i bought that and i had it ppi'd and it's out there and i know the car is okay what is going to be the process where I give you a call? You know, what, what are we going to go through? What are the things that I need to get prepared to kind of make sure that the process goes smooth? No questions, no nothing. Yeah, no problem. So let me ask you this. Are we, are we talking just a private move or is it at a dealership? Um, uh, let's say a dealership. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you're looking, you purchased a vehicle from a dealership uh, and you're looking to get it shipped, no problem. Mm -hmm. So basically the first thing you would do, just call me right away. And the first thing I would ask, okay, it's at the dealership. Just make sure it runs and drives. Got it. Yes. It runs I and drives. You, I hope so. If no it's problem. a dealership, right? <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> yes. No problem. But I always ask, cause you never know. I, I deal with smaller dealerships that you, you'd be amazed. Yeah. So oh, yeah. always got to ask that question. Um, once you provide that info to me, I'll say, okay, is the vehicle paid for? Is is all the paperwork signed? And is it received by the dealership? And the dealership right. is the dealership ready to release the vehicle? Right. Um, so once that's complete, we can go ahead and start doing our job. So I would need a, a pickup zip code, a delivery zip code. So basically, I need the name of the dealership. 
one where question real quick. So have you, has it ever happened where you've gone to a dealership or something to pick up a vehicle and something hasn't been paid for and you have to wait for it or all, all the time. That's why we ask. Okay. So, so what will happen is a dealership will not release a vehicle. The paperwork's not complete. They legally mm -hmm. cannot. Um, and they also legally obviously won't release a vehicle if it's not paid for. Um, yeah. So in order for the vehicle to be released, quote unquote, mm -hmm. um, both of those things need to be done before you contact any shipper. Got it. Um, if you do contact shipper, they'll advise. Um, they do it. need to wait. Um, but I have sent trucks in for vehicles that have not been available. And, and wow. it sucks. you have to pay yeah. these, these drivers uh, a fee. For well, I can, and basically, I'm thinking you double it up on what you're paying for it. So, yeah, yeah. Having, those, having those ducks in a row is probably a really good idea. <laughs> and that, yeah, that's a very key point is yeah. make sure, you know, it's, it's paid for and – your salesman confirms that the vehicle is available anytime for a pickup. Got it. Okay. So what's next? So then uh, once we confirm everything's ready to go, I would provide you with pricing. Um, I'd ask you whether you want open or enclosed service, depending on the vehicle. I know most times what you're going to want right. um, or I would advise. And in order to do that, I just need the name of the dealership uh, where your home is located. And then mm -hmm. I can provide you with pricing and also, uh, lead times. Uh, typically, on average, I can get a vehicle picked up, um, you know, a major city in three to five days. Uh, and then transporter driver can drive roughly about 500 miles in a day. Um, so according to all that, I would provide you with your timing. Um, once approved, I would obviously um, collect the further details. Mm -hmm. And then we would begin working on scheduling a truck to pick up your vehicle. Mm -hmm. So once, once it was scheduled and we had a truck assigned, I would call the customer directly right away, make sure that the dates work with them. And if the dates do work with them, then we take care of payment. We send the truck in there to pick it up. Nice. So, yeah. So is there, is there like one thing about, so if, if you're picking up the vehicle and then you bring it back and obviously this can be a three or four day process sometimes, um, or even longer, depending on where you're picking it up from. Yeah. Have you ever had it where the person that if you're dropping it off, maybe not at the person's home, you're dropping it off at say their business or their, you know, like warehouses, a lot of these collector guys have these warehouses or like these storage oh, areas. Yeah. Um, have you ever had it where they, they try to drop it off and the person just isn't there? Yeah, that, that has happened. It actually has happened this week. Um, wow. So basically um, we always tell our drivers to accommodate um, our customers the best that they can. Right. So in this specific situation, I just had the driver wait um, for about an hour just till the guy was freed up and out of work. And then the yeah. driver unloaded the car. So they never um, have it where they have, you've never had one where they picked it up and had to take it back because the person isn't around or. It wasn't. Oh, I've had to do that before. <laughs> oh well. no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> customer goes MIA. Mm. I've actually had a customer die on me. Um, no. And, yeah. And we weren't able to deliver the car. So that was very <sighs> unfortunate. Um, but that, hey, situations happen and it's all about yeah. how you handle those situations. Yeah, exactly. I can imagine. Times, so. Wow. That's sad. Um, so, so with I, let's say that I did the shipping. So I'm obviously Eastern Massachusetts up near the water. Um, yeah. and then you, um, I, let's say I have my car in Pennsylvania. What it meant. So let's say three days we get a truck. We've already set everything up. I'm definitely going to be there. It's bought, it's purchased. The dealership is waiting. You go to buy to pick it up. You bring it back and then I sign to pay for my fee. What do you think the normal rate for something like that shipping would be? Um, are we talking open or enclosed? Uh, enclosed. Yeah. Let's go enclosed. enclosed. So yeah. We're mm -hmm. probably talking around twelve hundred dollar range. Twelve hundred? Yep. Nice. It depends majorly. Um, there's a lot of aspects that go into right. pricing on our right. side of things. Um, but if I had to guess right off the top of my head, like if it's going to Philly or, or somewhere like that, you'd be looking at that. Uh, yeah. price range yeah which i don't think that's i mean we used to ship stuff i mean same area and it was exact that's that's pretty much was the going rate have you seen this price go up do i mean obviously truck fuel cost fuel cost crazy right now oh yeah so we've seen some of the craziest things that you know what i mean like it's something that's always been concerned i'm sure people out there are concerned about that have you seen truck prices or these prices increase because of uh of these fuel costs or have things kind of you know, pulled back as much as they could. No. So, so basically the fuel rates have, ex have affected our rates dramatically, as yeah. you can imagine. 
Yeah. Um, over on the the West Coast specifically, fuel diesel fuels up upwards of nine dollars a gallon. Oh yeah, so, mm-hmm. yeah. Obviously, that affect that would affect our rates dramatically. Um, right. So it's just we live in some tough times, and it's just being honest yeah. um, with the customers at that time. Just that's the price to get it done. Um, fuel costs. Would it would it be cheaper to say, hey, I'm doing? And the thing is, I don't. Okay, if you're doing your okay, we'll do this a little bit backwards here because I want to do this. All right. Uh, but let's say, when do I pick? Depending on the truck. So when do I say, you know, I want enclosed or I want, a, you know, just a flat bed will do. Obviously, with, you know, with the one that we were talking about with this truck, you know, obviously that being on a flat bed. That's yeah. nobody's going to care as much about that. Um, that's a high use vehicle. But let's say, for instance, what what kind of range would I look in to say, you know what? Hey, you know what? Maybe I should go enclosed with this or, you know, is it dependent on distance or it really is value of car? Uh, it's really, really is the value of the car right. um, in, in my experience. So a lot of people uh, are always people are always looking for the cheapest rate possible. Right. So someone contacted me with, you know, uh, someone actually wanted me to ship recently a Lamborghini Huracan open. It wasn't going far, but I mean, you're still subjected to um, rocks, uh, road debris, which isn't covered by insurance, rocks and road debris. Uh, and any glass are not covered by any insurance. So right. in those situations, like I advise this customer is, hey, this is an extremely expensive Lamborghini. I really, really advise against shipping this thing open just because of the factors I just spoke right. about. Mm-hmm. And he was understanding and he said, no, I, I really appreciate that because I've been calling around and all these other guys will ship it open. No problem. And no one let me know. So. Right. Um, just by being honest and kind of educating these customers um, the best I can just to um, better assist them and provide right. the best service possible to them is always what I'm going to do. Well, the other thing I think about making sure that you get all the information, especially with, say, like a Huracan or vehicles like that, is uh, we had the problem all the time with Mercy Lagos and Diablos and stuff like that is they're very wide. And they don't do very well going on like flatbeds because the angle that they have to come up, you're scraping oh, yeah. things and old e gears and burning out clutches and junk like that. You'd be amazed at how many times I hear this stuff. So the thing I think is important too is is not to think about so much the money of it in some respects, but also to think about what kind of vehicle you're shipping and what kind of process it's got to go through to get there to say. Hey, you know what? Not just enclosed, but the idea of, you know, I'm sure if you're shipping your Civic, you don't care too much about putting it on a flatbed and rolling it up an angle, but yeah. making sure that you get the right information and know that it's got to be on a truck that's going to come on. It's going to, you know, one thing we were looking at with this one right over here was the angle that the back of this, like this is a smaller enclosed truck. Oh, yeah. um, this would be something for, you know, you have the two cars and they're going to fit right in there and it's not a lot of angle to it. And they're very protected, uh, versus like you said, something where it's, you know, collector car and you go, it, it doesn't really go different areas. So you gotta, <laughs> you know what I mean? So oh, that's yeah. the thing is, I think, and a lot of times I don't, I mean, I'm sure you try to get ahead of it and think of it, but there comes a point when somebody tells you some weird you know, Fiat or something out in the middle of nowhere. It's like, Hey, this Alfa Romeo, blah, and you can't see the car that it's important to let you know about those details. Right? No, of course. So if you have, so I ship a lot of race cars and a lot mm-hmm. of low, nice. very low cars. Yes. Um, you know, tuna culture is, is just getting bigger and bigger as we mm-hmm. speak. Um, so um, we're experiencing a lot more lower cars, like very low, a couple yeah. inches. So in situations like that, it's very important to know uh, how low the car is, any modifications that are made to the car are very important to know. Right. Um, like, for example, a, a big pickup truck, if it has a lift kit, big tires. Oh, yeah. Cool. I didn't even think about that. So, yeah, we definitely need to know that because there's a legal amount of clearance uh, mm-hmm. on these trucks that we need to account for as well to make sure we can legally uh, find the right setup that's wow. not going to go over clearance. So there's yeah. a lot of things that go into it. Uh, and to circle back to the low clearance cars, yeah. Um, it's very important that you let us know. So that way we can arrange for the proper equipment to show up, uh, yeah. meaning a truck with a lift gate on the back. So that way you just drive the car right onto the lift gate and it doesn't have to go up any ramps or anything like that. The lift gate would more than likely raise mm-hmm. it up to the top or raise it to the perfect level on the bottom. 
right. and just drive the car straight in. Um, yeah. That way, there's no ramps that needs to go up to to scrape the bottom bumpers um, and that sort of thing. So it's very important right. to know all the details on the car prior to shipping. Right. But the thing is, is that so in the, now to go back full circle for more, we can't really, we're doing circles today. This is pretty cool. Uh, um, <laughs> but in the first one, we were talking about it and I said, but if you want to be cheap and say, I don't want to spend a lot of money, it's not, maybe it's not going that far doing whatever. And somebody says, you know, the, the flatbed is probably the cheapest option. Would that be accurate? And then the enclosed is more expensive or, and then the tractor trailer, I'm guessing is the big, big payout or how does no, that work? So, so basically open or enclosed either yeah. way are usually the same rate. Got um, it. More or less. So yeah. we do have, you know, we don't stick vehicles on flatbeds. Uh, we always use car carriers or a three car wedge uh, that okay. those sort of setups for our vehicles. Right. Um, but we have multiple different types of equipment we could use all the way from a six car hauler, um, which is a large semi with an yep. enclosed trailer on the back that holds six cars Got with it. a lift gate most times. And okay. then we have also two, three car enclosed trailers that we could use. Um, that basically is your normal F550 towed, towed behind a two, three car trailer. Nice. Um, op- on the open side of things, like I said, you, you got the wedges, you got the nine car carriers um, mm-hmm. and, and some other um, miscellaneous setups that we, we will use as well for right. uh, oversized vehicles and that sort of thing. So yeah. um, that's one of the benefits of using a broker uh, is you're, you're not susceptible just to the equipment that a carrier has. Uh, right. We have access to all kinds of different setups and equipment that can accommodate just about any how, car. How, how crazy has the setups been? Like most of the stuff I've ever done has been very simple, enclosed. You know, you drive it in, you close the door, you drive away. I mean, it's other than width wise, which is our biggest issue. Yeah. Uh, most of that stuff's pretty cut and dry. Um, what's the, is it, have you, I mean, obviously like an F650, I'm sure takes a lot of love, but is there anything that's been kind of crazy like you had to order a special truck or you had to do something way out and left the older i can imagine wide load things and cops and all that other stuff too so well yeah well that that fire truck is a prime example right there yeah. um we had to actually find a low boy if you see the picture right there yeah mm-hmm. um, we had to find a low boy trailer so it could accommodate because these these fire trucks they can't go up big ramps um okay. they need something low because they're such tall vehicles as well right so the mm-hmm. So to be at the proper clearance, we need to find a low boy. Um, so like, like I said, we, we have access to just about any equipment that we would need to use. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's our job accommodating the best equipment. I'm, I'm, I'm almost wanting to put a challenge out there to people to say, look, I want you guys to ship, uh, with executive auto and I want you guys to challenge them. Like, you know, like you, you guys, I know guys. <laughs> exactly. I love the so I have friends in construction and they have the craziest. Ve- I'm like, why is this a vehicle exist? Um, and the stuff is just like graders and things to like work on roads and street. Cause they have to basically build streets if they're making these developments. So it's oh yeah, really crazy. So I'm like, at this point, I'm like, Hey, you guys need something shipped. Like give them a call and give them a challenge. I can't wait. So, um, th- this is my big one. This is kind of the question I've been looking forward to asking you the whole time. It's like, What has been kind of the, I want to say the coolest car and like the most expensive car you've ever shipped. And what, what was the, if, and and if you got two, that's, that's perfect. All right. So actually the coolest and the most expensive car probably wrapped into one. Okay. Um, so we attend auctions throughout the country. Um, and at this one specific auction uh, in Florida, there's actually a, um, uh, Batmobile that was used in one of the films. Is it this Um, one? Yep, that's it right there. Oh, wow. Yep. So it's actually a funny story with this Batmobile. Um, this is the coolest car to me uh, in a lot of ways. I, For some reason, I, I think it is the coolest I've shipped um, just because of the, the story behind it, which I'll tell you. Okay, um, please. So I'm sitting there <laughs> at the auction, and uh, we ship all the vehicles out of this auction, and we have a very tight time frame to get them all out because they only have the auction for a couple of days. So we get a call and I get this gentleman on the phone. He's like, Hey, I just purchased this Batmobile at the auction. I said, Oh, cool. I'm on site. He's like, I'm looking to ship it to Wisconsin. I said, okay, no problem. And I was like, Hey, just out of curiosity. Um, why'd you buy this Batmobile? I'm just curious. Nice. He goes, well, 
Um, to be honest with you, he's like, I own a funeral home and I bought this as a prop for all the child and newborn deaths. And I'm going to use it as a prop at these funerals and I don't charge a fee. Wow. So that kind of hit me pretty hard. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to give you a good discount on this and get this thing out of there, out of here and save to you. So I got it loaded up personally, same day and delivered to him. So for a lot of, a lot of reasons, that's definitely the coolest car. And one of the, the cars that hit home for me. Um, right. So, yeah. So what, that, what's that the, a, the, since we've done that, then I have to ask, I mean, that, that story is pretty out there. Like, is there yeah. a, there, is there a craziest one or like a, an oddest story that you have? Um, that one's pretty, that one was pretty odd. That happened to me yeah. directly, but I mean, one day I was sitting at my desk uh, and I got a phone call from a, a gentleman. He, he works okay. at this corporate company. Apparently they make these, um, vans for, um, washing dogs. So it's like a dog. Okay. Van. Yeah. Wow. And on the back, on the back of this van, it's like, it's a sprinter van. And on the back portion of the van is a big like fiberglass molding of a dog and the first thing i thought of was like oh boy this is like those dumb and it looks just like the dumb and dumber movie no oh, way that dog yeah just like that. so that that <laughs> was that was pretty interesting and weird um yeah. to get that call but i was like yeah of course i can ship those i can ship as many as you want <laughs> Oh so, my God. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah that was, wouldn't be the one that I'm like, I'm driving out to meet this car. Like I got to get a picture next to it to just be like, yes, it does exist. It did happen. You know? Yeah. yeah <laughs> to this day, I still shipping the dumb and dumber dog vans all around. So, That's amazing. Um, and then I, I can think of another one as well. I, I got a call from a customer um, a couple of years ago. Uh, and he shipped his vehicle with a local transport company around us. Mm -hmm. um, they're enclosed. They have the lift gate, like I discussed. Yeah. And um, basically, whoever the driver was wasn't being as thorough as he should have been, um, and had the vehicle on the top of the lift gate. Forgot to put a wheel chalk on the back of the vehicle, and the vehicle oh. rolled right off the back. Oh. So that no. that's pretty horrifying. Uh, yeah. Thank God it didn't happen at our expense. Right. Um, but that is a horror story that I, well, we, we had, um, it was funny. I wasn't going to bring this up, but it's one of the classic stories that I have was, um, and obviously guys, before I tell the story, remember it has nothing to do with these guys. This is something that I ran into with shipping, but we had a customer, um, that worked at a dealership. He was ordering a Ferrari. Um, he had it, it was a brand new car. It was just being delivered. Um, he had waited. It was, it was a special delivery. So I want to say it was like five and a half months. It was right on the cusp of six. So, so it might've been anywhere from like first week of five or, you know, closer to the six, but um, he had waited some time to get his vehicle. He finally gets the thing delivered. He shows up day of, like he knew when the truck was going to be there and he shows up for it and here's the car. And we're all like a couple of us knew what was going on. So we all show up and, want to see this thing come off because it's the special build. So imagine like a special purple or blue or whatever. So here comes the thing that comes off of the truck and something was wrong with the back gate. So there's the two little lift points. So it comes out and then there's this lift that kind of connects to it. And that's where the car kind of goes back, but it's a long car. So that back wheel wasn't supposed to sit on it, but it has to, to be able to get off the truck. And it's, they do it all the time. It wasn't a big deal. And this, I think they may even build trucks differently now than they did back then. So here we are watching it. <clears throat> and the guy that did the truck, the guy that was running the truck, literally did everything perfectly. He couldn't have done anything any better. And all of a sudden you hear this like metallic noise and you see he's start. He's, you know, he was in the car, by the way. So he's pressing the button as it goes down. It kind of went ka -chunk, ka -chunk, like that. It's like, it's not moving like it should. And then on the third one, it goes, he's like, but chunk, but chunk, put. And then all of a sudden that back gate where the back wheels are sitting went, Ugh, and it just fell to the ground, like no resistance whatsoever. Oh. So now the car is hovering and it, it's only rear wheel drive. So the rear wheels are like spinning. The front wheels are just kind of hanging and he's in it going, what do I do? So I think he, your brain thinks if I gas it a little bit, maybe I can get it back up on the truck. Well, I guess that made some sort of ballast in the back because instead of the vehicle just kind of staying, it started to hover. So he kind of gassed it more and that centrifugal force just 
kept pulling the car back and finally till it went straight down and it landed. So the back of the piece was right here like this. It was just on the ground with the butt and the front was oh. hanging on the top of the truck. So here's the guy that's ordered the car. His jaw has hit the floor. It's dragging across the thing. The general manager is just has no idea what to say. So we're seeing, and there's the guy in the car, like kind of stuck and he hits the ground and he's like, you know, it, it was basically a car accident. So we knew like nobody was okay. So everybody runs out to kind of say, there's a teeter tartar in car, be careful. Um, and then they, they get the guy out. Well, it's on a busy highway. So somebody's looking from the ground outside. So what do you hear in the background as the ambulance is showing up? The ambulance can't get to the dealership because it was like a six car pileup because everybody long necked the car that was hanging He's watching it. Yeah, yeah. So there's a helicopter above. There's a thing going on. So the GM is just literally like, can you imagine the insanity? He was literally I was just like, I'm sitting there and I'm going, uh, I have enough clearance on this other side to leave. I'm just, I'm going to let you go. And you just call me and let me know how it goes. And he's like, yeah, every, uh, it's, we'll, we'll, we've got what it is, what it is kind of thing. He said he was very stalwart about it, but you could tell like the gears of the entire of his brain had just all locked together and just crashed. It was like, it was the most horrifying thing you could ever see. But, um, but yeah, it, it was, I've never seen anything since. So as that, long that's as that day, right yeah, there. but that was so you know, had to have your car. You've waited five months to have it literally hanging there. The driver stuck inside of it. And then to have a six car pile up in the front from people. And now the ambulance can't even get to the guy. I don't think it can get any worse. That. Yeah. That, that's pretty horrifying. <laughs> right. That's but yeah, one. I don't expect you to be doing that. And even if you did, you, you've got millions of dollars to cover anything that could possibly happen. Yeah. Right? And we, we would handle it to the best of our ability. Right. I think the most, I, I think the most today you have to be concerned of is the, the pistas, uh, the Ferrari pistas and some of the other Ferraris, the high end stuff oh, yeah. uh, for those love catching on fire. So just, I'm, let me say that from my end so that you'll, when you see one, you'll be like, okay, fire. Does it burn? <laughs> Has it caught on fire yet? So, but yeah, but the, the old days of that stuff of us chipping cars and catching on fire, it was so funny that it, it, it there was reasons for it with catalytic converters and stuff. And it didn't happen as much as people think. And it didn't happen in shipping. It was a lot of times in driving. But it was so funny that everybody used to always have those myths. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, is there anything, because I think we're going to close it up a little bit here. Um, is there anything that you could say to somebody that they're just getting ready to ship their vehicle? They, you know, now they're on the process. They're ready to go. What is something that you could tell them to make sure that the plan that they have is going to go into place and everything is going to go smoothly? What's something that people just forget all the time? They forget. So one of the biggest things I encounter a lot mm -hmm. and my biggest advice would be the last thing you want to do when you're looking for pricing is just go online and start filling stuff out. No oh boy. Um, the reason being is these, a lot of times these online quote forms or whatever they may be are companies that are just selling leads. So they'll yeah. sell the leads to five, six different transport companies. And before you know it, your email, your phone, your. Oh, anywhere, it's blowing up everywhere in there. Yeah, yeah, it's, and it never ends. They just call and they call and they call. So you, just call you just, me. <laughs> you just really made a lot of sense to me because I've realized, like it, uh, all this time that we had done stuff with stuff in the past. And yes, I have obviously working in an exotic car dealership or any kind of like that, or you know, brokering for for instance. You have to deal with some of these things, and where we get desperate and go, I'm going to fill out this form, and somebody's going to get back to me, right? And, uh, and the thing was, is I always wondered why my phone got so blown up and all the stuff that happened to it and how it was just like, I don't think those guys ever did anything. Now it all makes sense. Cause I'm yeah. like, oh, I wish I, it's like, why didn't I have you back then? It was like, oh, cause you're, you've been around for six years. So, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. why weren't you around when I was in business and calling <laughs> me? Jeez. Could have contacted. Yeah. I, don't even, I don't even know if LinkedIn existed back then. Do you? I don't know. What, what year did that uh, thing start? I'm not sure. I'm not yeah. sure. And to be honest, I, I just got into it about a year ago. So Nice. And is, has, it, has it worked out for you? Yeah. Yeah. I like using LinkedIn. I, I get a lot of um, a lot of hits on, on LinkedIn. I, I enjoy using it. 
I, that's something I, and i had not um i was not a linkedin person and it just i don't know why i put my resume out there but i never got any job offers and the other thing is is i kind of I sought out my business. I know, and or people knew me from the straight. Cause it was, so it was pretty clear when you had stuff. And there's only so many exotic car, supercar dealerships out there that you can work for that oh, yeah. sell stuff. So it was like, you know, I had three choices and I kind of figured out who, you know, was the best person to work for. And I really didn't think about the money side of it. I thought of it more as the, you know, just the whatever had the best you know where i was going to meet the most customers and have the most experience and fun time at it um but yeah since i've done it with this i've had a lot more responses with it. it's been a lot more um receptive um so maybe that's something that i should probably look into more and obviously i got a good guest like you on through it so um i think it's i think it's doing a lot better job than it used to for me so yeah well i just like linkedin because you go on the facebooks and the instagrams and yeah. it's just full of just you know, random stuff you don't care about. Half the it's time. cold. Yeah, exactly. And LinkedIn's more business oriented and you can make more business connections and whatever it may be. On LinkedIn. Right. So exactly. Yeah, it's more, it's more directed. Right? Exactly. exactly. Perfect. So before we go, obviously I want to make sure that everybody out there makes ex um, executive auto transport, their Facebook and IG have the same uh, ending on it's E A T R A N S P O R T L L C. Um, that's, I want to bring that out there because a lot of guys will be listening on the podcast side of it. So they'll want to do that. And obviously with their website is executive auto transport, LLC.com. So you guys out there, remember, um, we're going to, all this information will also be in our, um, subject areas of any of the podcasts or any of the, uh, like YouTube and LinkedIn and Facebook and that kind of thing. So if you want to check it out, then is there any other information that you need to let them know about to get in touch with you? Um, my final, let's say my final speech, if you will, yeah, um, would be so brokers like ourselves, we get a really brokers in general get a really bad rap. Okay. Um, and the reason being is a lot of times uh, an individual will just go out and try to start shipping cars on their own as a broker. Right. Right. So a lot of times you're just getting someone that's sitting at home at their parents' house trying to ship your cars. Um unprofessionally and they don't have insurance or anything like that right. um but a, a good broker is worth his his weight in gold um yeah. the reason being is they're much quicker than your carriers will be because mm -hmm. they just have more access to have resources equipment. yeah more resources mm -hmm. uh if you will and also brokers are able to perform within dates and quicker dates and that sort of thing and accommodate you a lot better than a carrier would be able to do because carriers, mm -hmm. um, they, they book all their own clients and they're more predicated to corporate accounts and that sort of thing. So, right. uh, for individuals, uh, like I said, a, a good broker is, is really worth his weight in gold. A broker that has an office, has insurance, is willing to provide you with that insurance certificate, um, and is really set up to do business correctly is is really something you need to look for um when you're looking to ship a vehicle yeah and i i agree the more right but just a quick shout out hey sneaky thanks for tuning in buddy that's one of my guys from the uk so i just wanted to be a shout out from him he doesn't get to come on much but i'm we're at the perfect time for those guys so it was a good time to get them but uh but the big thing about i think like you were saying with the brokerage thing and i don't understand why anybody would give you a bad rap because i just the idea of having access to so much stuff and being able to coordinate things, I think connects kind of the rubber to the road, if you will. It's the tendon that keeps this whole thing together and makes it your job is to get in touch with the client, keep the client happy and to work with the agency that's actually moving the vehicle and making sure that they meet your stringent standards. So in that thinking process, there's, there's really like, two two or three different layers of checks and balances that are going to go into shipping a car so that's the thing is, is and it, obviously we've done a lot of talking here and we, we've said stuff like lamborghini um and and obviously stuff like rolls royces and ferraris and big cars like that but let's be honest you you have whatever car you have maybe your car is a civic and it's the love of your life maybe it's maybe it's that integra type r that someday is going to be worth 60 to eighty thousand dollars or maybe it's just a car that you purchased that you know i've been looking for it for a while and i needed to get someplace i want you to be able to have somebody that you can reach out to and say 
hey, I want to get in touch with these guys and uh, and I want to be able to talk to them and say, hey, I need you to love my car just as much as I love it. And that's the thing is, is I think exact executive auto transport is definitely going to be the people uh, that are going to take for you. So thank you, Joseph Tebow, for coming out today. It has been an amazing conversation. Um, I, I hope I didn't beat you up too bad with some of my bad stories. But uh, otherwise, I want to thank you for coming on, and I hope you enjoyed your time today. Thank you. I did. I appreciate you having me on, Primo. I really do. Perfect. Hey, and remember, guys, if you're looking for something, executive auto transport, you now know a guy on the inside. So give him a call and we will talk to you then. And otherwise, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Remember, put something in the comments below. Let us know what you think. If you're looking for something everywhere, we're going to keep an eye out for you. And we're going to continue to watch for the next big show, the next big thing, whatever it is, whether it be car shows, whether it be rallies, uh, or whether it be just bringing you the next best brands out there to make sure that your life is easier. You guys have a great day. And as always, keep rolling.